Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 274, A Summary of the People of the Ceiling, Part 4. The podcast objectives are analyze the liberal viewpoint of the law, reveal how many came to follow Satan, reveal why many are in lawlessness, analyze the valley of decisions, and reveal the 80 degrees of lawlessness. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. Where did all the passengers go? Now, we concluded the most recent podcast analyzing the conservative position concerning the law we are to keep in these last days. That is, the position that the entirety of the law has been made void. Accordingly, those who have migrated to the extreme position of the far right on this topic are not dedicated to following any facet of the law. Rather, they are adhering to popular Christian belief or the SOPs of the religion they follow. Now, seeing as we have already analyzed the downfall of this position, we must now analyze the opposite pole, that is, the far left or the liberal position. I will begin with the following interest point, which I introduced in the most recent podcast. Those who are on the far left side of this argument are worse off than those who are on the far right. For those who are on the left side of this argument are those who have gone backwards in their beliefs while placing themselves under the law when there is no law for them to be under. Now, the question of the hour is, how did these individuals get to such a disastrous position? The answer, there are many faults behind this manner of descent, and they are all centered on one. Enter lawlessness. In proving this matter, I will analyze the process by which many have come to be on the far left of this topic. And at each stop, you will clearly see how their migration into madness is defined by consistent occasions in which they resist the law. Let's start at the beginning. During the restoration of the nation of Israel, i.e. the first season in these last days, many of the physical offspring of Yaakov were awakened and many were inspired to share the restoration message. Now, this speaks to the example I used in the most recent podcast, vis-a-vis -vis the journey of truth, a spiritual movement in which many joined themselves to this train by the thousands, all of them stimulated by the brilliance and the power of the restoration message. Notwithstanding, within a few years' time, that train, which was carrying millions of passengers 
across the world is now only carrying hundreds and tens. Alas, the number of passengers has decreased exponentially, and it is still decreasing. The question is, where did all the passengers go? As for the answer, we will find it as we continue analyzing this story to see how it continues and to see how it ends. A truth they once believed. Now, let's discuss the next frame in this development. To it, we must consider what happened to those who were awakened after the restoration movement was fully underway. First of all, the excitement of this movement naturally died down, not because the restoration message suddenly was no longer inspiring. Quite the contrary. The excitement dissipated because the time had come for the people to get to work. Remember, the restoration message is a combination of the content and the intent. Therefore, once the people had received the content and were renewed by this inspirational message, the time came for them to fulfill the intent. Lo, here lies the inflection and the problem. It is such an immense problem that I will offer it as an interest point. And this is one that I advise you to bookmark, especially if you did not perceive when this happened. Many who received the content of the restoration message did not go on to fulfill the intent of the message. They did not go on to perfection by adhering to the Torah of Yahushua Messiah. Alas, they were more than willing to hear a feel-good story, and yet they were unwilling to do what the author of this feel-good story commanded us to do. This speaks to the stark difference between the hearers of the word and the doers of the word. It also tells the tale of the disappearance of the vast majority of the passengers who began this journey of truth with us in the beginning. Lo, these individuals evacuated the train because they were unwilling to become doers of the word. And if this wasn't bad enough, something worse followed. Consider this. Instead of conceding the fact that these detractors were, in fact, imposters who rejected the Father's command and refused to become doers of the word, these rebels doubled down on their insurrection. And in doing so, they hijacked the restoration message and became instruments of Satan. That's right, my friends. Many who received the content of the restoration message in the beginning are now messengers of Satan, teaching a modified version of a truth they once believed. Now, this speaks to the damaging and residual defects of lawlessness. To it, many of these individuals are oblivious to the fact that they have become messengers of Satan. Look, they still believe they are under the restoration. This is precisely why you have heard me constantly warn this audience concerning the great peril of lawlessness and all manner of sin, for it leads to spiritual blindness. And I'll say it again. Blindness is one of the few spiritual conditions that offers no potential of recovery. And thus, 
to answer the question of the hour. Where did all the passengers go? The answer is sure, as these were all blinded by their rejection to the Father's commands. They all migrated into lawlessness and became workers of iniquity. And all because they rejected a truth they once believed. Because the sky didn't fall. Now, these things being what they are, it is expedient for us to analyze how this disaster went down. To it, we must take a closer look at the restoration movement to better understand the people and places of the ceiling. Here is why. The thing that was shall be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. For this cause, we understand that the phenomenon of passengers evacuating the train of truth was not a one-time occasion. Neither was it unique to the restoration of the nation. Quite the contrary, this evacuation has persisted. My dear friends, this evacuation is happening even now. Yahuwah is sealing his set-apart ones and at the same time, many are getting off the train. Here again, we've already discussed why this is happening. But now, we must look closer and analyze how this is happening. Of all the reasons, here is the most critical. As this phenomenon is defined by spiritual blindness, Many are evacuating this train without realizing it. They are migrating into lawlessness without even knowing it. Here lies the problem. Namely, people may know they are rejecting the truth, whether through rationalization or via intentional disregard. However, they do not always appreciate, neither do they understand, the consequences of their rejection. Look, listen, for it has been written, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. True to the word, many rejected the intent of the restoration message. And because the sky didn't fall down on them, they simply continued in their rejection. Alas, this is the great disappointment of the restoration movement. It is also a great testament to the eternal damnation of lawlessness and the sordid yet deadly capacity Satan has in preventing many who were called from being chosen. For although Yahuwah did desire for hundreds of millions to be restored across the world, we are more likely considering ten thousands. And for one simple reason, the majority chose lawlessness over holiness and the sky didn't fall. We found ourselves in a valley of decisions. Now, some might be asking, what did this look like? Whether you came to know the restoration message recently or in the early 2000s, or perhaps even earlier, how did this all go down? How did the many who were called get off the train? Well, I'll tell you using a common example, which I also touched on in the most recent podcast, as I analyzed the far right position on this topic. Enter the guarding of the Shabbat. As I said before, many of us who have come into the restoration were guarding 
nine of the Ten Commandments before our awakening. The one we were leaving out was the command to guard the Sabbath day. Now, for those of us in Mystery Babel, this command would be a challenge for many of us because we were used to working on the seventh day. And thus, we found ourselves in a valley of decisions concerning the Shabbat. On the one hand, we could decide to guard the Shabbat, come what may. On the other hand, we could reject the command to guard the Shabbat and rationalize our disobedience. Alas, here lies the inflection and the problem. Vis-a-vis, -vis, the majority followed the second path. They refused to guard the Shabbat for a host of reasons, and each reason exposed these false believers for who they truly are. Consider this. Everyone who heard the restoration message and refused to guard the Shabbat is a worker of iniquity and a champion of lawlessness. Now true, this is not only in the case of the Shabbat. My dear friends, this is the case for every precept of the Torah of perfection. It is the case for every word of truth the Spirit has revealed to you that you have not followed. And this, brothers and sisters, is how millions across the world fell off the restoration train. They heard the word of restoration, but they refused to become doers of the word. Unlike Ezekiel, they failed to eat the whole roll. But alas, they didn't stop there. Instead, they did the only insane thing an insane person could do. They attempted to place themselves back under the law, a law which we have already proven doesn't exist. Now look, here lies the inflection and the problem. By placing themselves under the law in an illegal spiritual fashion, these imposters have made themselves accursed unto Elohim. And yet, this was the only path they could take. Here is why. By resisting the will of Elohim, refusing to guard his commands, these rebels aligned themselves with the former nation of Israel who did not receive the promise. We know this because they, like the former nation, attempted to work out their own righteousness and to find their own path to salvation within the law, without believing in the promise and following the example of Yahushua Messiah. And thus, they have come full circle. They are back where they started. And because they chose the second path, they, like the former nation, have returned to the former station of accursed. The 80 Degrees of Lawlessness. Now, that being said, we should focus our attention to the real enemy. We should concern ourselves with the real problem at hand. That would be the many channels of lawlessness. Here is why. Lawlessness is the seductive alternative to holiness and perfection which did not appear recently. My dear friends, lawlessness is the antithesis of the foundation of our faith. Lawlessness is counter to the law. This is why Yahuwah is leading me to focus on the 80 degrees of lawlessness after we finish this phase. To wit, once I have fulfilled the seven guidelines, Upon the sealing of these set-apart ones, we will execute a daily exposition 
of the 80 degrees of lawlessness. Here is why. As lawlessness is the number one reason why many fell off the restoration train over the past 20 plus years, it is also the number one threat to those who are yet holding on to the truth. Brothers and sisters, hear me carefully when I say, if you are knowingly or unknowingly operating in any of the degrees of lawlessness, you will fall off this train and you will not be sealed. Now, the question of the hour then is, what are the 80 degrees of lawlessness? Now, although we will not go into great detail into these 80 degrees until the end of this phase, I will share them with you now. Specifically, I will show you the ones that have caused many to fall off the restoration train. Now, here are the first 20 of the 80, and I have highlighted in a red border the ones that were instrumental in causing many who heard the restoration message to resist the call to become doers of the word. We have doubt, disobedience, contempt, ignorance, deception, rejection, and disillusionment, amongst others. Now, here are the next 20. Here you should consider non-compliance, dishonesty, disregard, misconception, and neglect. Here we have the next 20. Here you should consider non-conformance, unrighteousness, irreverence, error, confusion, misjudgment, and greed. And here we have the last 20. Here you should consider self-reliance, defilement, blasphemy, denial, delusion, failure, iniquity, control, disloyalty, and rebellion. Now, here again, all 80 of the degrees of lawlessness have played a role in compromising the eternal futures of many who were called. Therefore, I ask you to stay with me because I will show you by the Spirit how you can overcome them all. Now, here is the final word. They resist the Spirit, whilst they withdraw, and found themselves without a law. This is the great conundrum of those who are preaching the restoration message, and yet they refuse to follow it. They refuse to do it. They are unwilling to practice what they preach. You will recognize them as you are led by the Spirit, for their endorsement of lawlessness has indeed led them to madness. For lo, Yahuwah has given them up to a reprobate mind. Alas, they are spiritual degenerates and perverted, and the worst for them is yet to come. As for the rest of us, the Spirit speaks expressly. We still have work to do. We will start by ridding ourselves of every degree of lawlessness by doing everything we know is true. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, End Times 274, a summary of the people and places of the ceiling, part four. And the next podcast is entitled End Times 280, the times and seasons of the ceiling. I will post this podcast on Monday, May 13th, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch, continue to pray, continue in fasting, and most of all, continue to be focused, for the end is coming. 
The end is near.